Good afternoon, my name is Emma Brown and I am the Head of Science at Retford Oaks and I just wanted to talk to you a bit about the option of taking the Triple Award or the GCSE Separate Sciences. If you want to type in a question um, during the presentation you can. Um, can you hear me okay Sue? <laughs> Okay, so the first question is really why study triple science? And triple science is the obvious choice for students who wish to study A-level science subjects and it has been championed by the government and industry for the way it prepares students for the world of STEM and that's science, technology, engineering and maths. So any student who wants to pursue a career in medicine or veterinary science or is interested in engineering or science related research working in the science industry, they would find that studying the separate sciences is a great advantage. It is a demanding course, it is academically rigorous, and students need to be really passionate about, about science and understanding the world around them. So in years 10 and 11, students will continue with the GCSE Combined Science Trilogy course that they started in year nine. So they're going to continue with all the key ideas of biology, chemistry, and physics. However, the difference is, is that all students who've opted to take the three separate sciences will be taught together in the same class. And in year 11, the triple scientists will be taught additional, more complex content that isn't actually covered in combined science lessons. Mm -hmm. The course is taught by subject specialists and will be covered in eight lessons a week. And the course is linear, just like combined science, so exams are taken at the end of year 11. So students will end up with three separate GCSE grades in biology, chemistry and physics. Now, I'm just obviously you can have a look at the specification and have a look at all the extra content there, and you can obviously have a look at the PowerPoint later on. But some of the additional biology content looks in much more detail at the way our bodies are, the way that humans and plants interact with the environment. I'm just going to turn off my email. There we go. Um, so, and homeostasis and response will look in much greater depth of detail on the hormonal and nervous regulation and includes a lot of detail about action and roles of plant hormones. And the brain, the eye and the kidney will be studied in detail and that isn't actually covered in combined. And another interesting section is the ecology content because that delves a lot further into the role of biotechnology and food production and food security and that's all very pertinent at the moment. So it's a really interesting course. For the chemistry, the additional content includes much greater focus on energy changes and chemical reactions and using the periodic table to describe trends and patterns and chemical reactions. And the organic chemistry topic contains a lot more detail on the structure and reactions of carbon compounds. And if a student is wanting to do A-level chemistry, then this is a really good bridge to A-level because in A-level chemistry, there's a very large organic chemistry module. So it will give them an advantage. For the physics, there's a much more detailed study of nuclear fission and fusion, the theory of statics and charge, and the fundamentals of fluid dynamics and pressure. And there's a lot greater emphasis on the applications of forces, so things like levers, gears, motion, impulse, and momentum. There's a further investigation to waves and the motor effects and the generation and delivery of electricity. And then another really interesting topic is the space topic. So students always find this really interesting. So there's an entire topic on space and that includes the Big Bang Theory. Now the course details are very similar, but obviously just the different names. So um, for GCS bi GCSE Biology, the title is GCSE Biology. It is a QA exam board. And there's two really useful website addresses there if you want to have a look on those. There's the board website, which has lots of past papers, and mark schemes, and teaching and learning resources. And the uh, specification website is there as well. And um, that has all the exam content and key definitions and all the practical activities. So they're both really useful uh, websites. Got all the details there for chemistry, so you can have a look through that later on. And all the details about physics as well. So I'm going to talk to you about assessment now. So it's no coursework, it's 100% examination, and there are six exam papers. So there's two biology papers, two chemistry papers, and two physics papers. And we always start with paper one biology, and the last exam is physics paper two. 
Now, practical work is obviously massive, uh, is of massive importance, and it runs throughout the course. So we used to have coursework, but now we just have the practical activities all the way through the lessons. So questions in the written exams will draw on the knowledge and understanding that students have gained by carrying out the practicals. So 15% of the overall marks is actually directly related to the practical activities that students have done in class. There are 10 required practical activities for biology, 8 for chemistry and 10 for physics. So now for the format of the exam papers, so there's two papers as I said for each separate science. So there's usually three to four topics that are tested. Uh, the written exam is one hour 45 minutes long, so that's half an hour longer than the combined science exams. There's foundation and higher tier and the total marks available is 100. And so it's 100 marks per paper and the six papers all together. So again, you can come back and have a look at these slides later on. And the awarding grades, again, are slightly, well, they're very different to combined. So the qualifications are nine point scale. So that's one to nine where nine is the best grade. So a student taking the higher tier papers will be awarded a grade within the range of four to nine. And they can still actually achieve a grade three, but anything below that, if students fail to reach the minimum standard for the grade three, then they would get a U. For foundation tier, the assessments will be awarded a grade within the range of one to five. And students who fail to reach the minimum standard for grade one would be recorded as a U and wouldn't receive a certificate. So really what we're looking for, for success in triple science, you need to have a good level of literacy. There is a lot of writing, there's a lot of new terminology and complicated keywords. And you also need good mathematical skills as well because there, there is an increased mathematical content in the exams. You need to be highly motivated and be able to work independently and have an outstanding work ethic. The bottom line is you have to be really passionate about science. You have to enjoy it because, as I said before, it is actually quite tricky content. We do have a lot of resources available at school, so there'll be discounted revision guides available. And there's a huge range of online resources, including videos of all the required practicals. So if a student does miss a practical lesson, then they can always go online and have a look at the entire practical and all the analysis being done. But obviously nothing is going to be as good as actually being in the lesson and carrying out the experiment, but there are a huge amount of resources that students can access. So hopefully I've preempted most questions, but if you want to type in any now, please feel free. Or if you want to have a think and then email me later on, then my address is on there. But it is a great course to take, it's great fun. The classes are full of students that really enjoy science. So it's a really nice atmosphere and I, I can highly recommend it if you're interested in science.